Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, meaning in the name. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. That may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also would like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harakak Wadash. And I was checking out this uh, re upload um, that the elder Kazak put up on this page entitled uh, For Brothers with Families Re Upload. And um, this was a, a heavy video in the spirit, or a sombering message, you know, and I, Lord's will, you know, uh, you brothers and a uh, few sisters that may be listening uh, can check it out because this is the reality of the walk that we're in. Okay, we're servants of Yahweh by Shemi And um, as uh, the scripture that they started off with, let's go ahead and grab it. Um, we have to be willing, or Salaki, let me just grab it and then bring out my point. This is Philippians 2 and 12. It says, wherefore, my beloved. As ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's right. So we are to be working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. OK, now, of course, our families uh, can be delivered. OK, if the Lord uh, permits to have uh, mercy upon them, you know, if um, as the brothers explained in the lesson. So I really don't want to uh, uh, touch up on that too much, but really just focusing on the fact that being able to sacrifice everything all right being willing to let whatever it is go for the kingdom okay being willing to let everything go for the kingdom our our mentality shouldn't be that okay well you know lord I, i'll serve you but if you take away my family i ain't gonna serve you no more if you take away my son and my daughter i ain't gonna i ain't, I ain't down with this no more you know i'm you gonna be so upset with the lord that you ain't gonna serve him no more nah all right because we are servants of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. He gives us our families, our, uh, whatever the case may be. I, I don't have a seed, so I can't really speak on experience. I just know what uh, the scriptures say, you know, and I know that that's a, a, a big tie or an emotional tie, having a seed and whatever the case may be. But we have to be willing if it comes down to it, if it permits to let that go all right, for the kingdom's sake. OK, really show forth that fidelity to the Lord, that faithfulness to the Lord. All right. And and improve that. And then the Lord will uh, bless us greatly. And I'm going to bring out this example um, in the scriptures. All right. To, to prove that point. But this is the book of Genesis, chapter 22 and verse one. It says, and it came to pass after these things that the most High did tip did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, behold, here am I. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac. Whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Right. So. This was Abraham's son, son, like I said, that he loved. OK, now Abraham received the son in his old age. This was a blessing that the Lord gave him. But now the Lord is turning around and telling him, I need you to sacrifice your son. All right. I need you to put him on the altar. Now, applying this um, in today's terms spiritually, that could be anything. All right, it doesn't have to be your actual seed. Okay, it could be anything, man. Are we willing to lay it down on the altar, sacrifice whatever it is? All right, for you, how about Shemiah was shy? Whatever it may be, okay? You have to ask yourself, what is, what is something that would be most important unto you? Or right, what is it that you may be holding on to? That's hard for you to let go. It could be a woman or certain relationships. All right. It could just be um, trying to uphold a certain image. OK, whatever the case may be. Ask yourself that and 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 be ready to put that on the altar, man. OK, so this says uh, verse verse three, it says, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and claved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which the Most High had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, abide ye here with his ass 
with the ass and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for a burnt offering? So right now, Isaac, he's getting a little, he's questioning now, like, hold on. All right, we got the wood, you know, we got stuff for the fire, but I don't, I don't see no uh, burnt offering. <laughs> so, you know, like, what's going on, right? But continuing on, it says, um, verse eight, and Abraham said, my son, the most I will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Verse nine, and they came to the place which the most I had told him of. And Abraham built an, uh, built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord, Yahweh called out, unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. So here it is, Abraham. He's got the knife. He's going to come down on Isaac. He's about to do it. Right. So in this, in, in today's sense, people be like, oh man, he, this, this dude's crazy. He's going to sacrifice his son and blah, 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 you know, whatever the case may be. But this was a great sign of faith to show forth that he feared Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai above everything. He was willing to let what he loved the most go for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So this is the same mentality that we must have, all right? Or whatever it is that may be hindering us and serving Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right, that could provoke the Lord's jealousy, okay? Because the Lord is a jealous power, right? Now, just a real quick point, and I'll get back to this because um, uh, this is Romans chapter six. All right, because like I said, the Lord is a jealous power, right? Meaning that in the scripture says uh, in the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, um, to set no other gods before him, right? Now, this is the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants, ye are to whom ye obey, right? So whatever you're yielding your time, your energy, your meditation upon, or your heart upon, so on and so forth. OK, that is your God that becomes what you are serving. So if you're meditating on the scriptures, if you're praying, thinking about the Lord, reading, studying, fasting, so on and so forth, so on to the spirit. All right. This is because what you serve the Lord. Right. Those are things that are pleasing unto the Lord. But if you're spending your time and your energy into uh, uh, and your focus in your mind, maybe it could be all up into your family. Now, of course, you're going to spend time and energy with that. But like the brothers even explained in uh, in the lesson, if that uh, if you doing too much of that and it's taken away from you sowing to the spirit or you serving the Lord. All right. Then you could be in jeopardy of provoking the Lord's uh, jealousy all right, his wrath. All right. Putting your family up as your God. Right now, once again, you know, go check out the lesson, you know, go listen to it through the spirit. But but we don't want to fall under that. Right. And the Lord will, uh, uh, the Lord can try you in those areas. Okay. If you be a man of the Lord, he could take those things away just to get your attention or, all right, if you have the discipline, all right, you're praying and you may care about certain things, but you still showing forth that you care about the Lord even more. He may not even worry about, uh, uh, taking away those things away from you, right? Because you're showing that you still fear him more, which goes back to the book of Genesis chapter 22 and verse um, Genesis 22 and verse Salakia. Uh, 10, it says, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord, Yahweh called out unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest the most high, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. So that proved that he feared the Lord more than everything else. What he loved the most, he put it on the altar. All right. What he loved the more, most, he was willing to sacrifice it. And that has to be the same mentality that we have, man. And then on top of that, because he showed forth that faith in that, he allowed him, he allowed Isaac to still live. OK, he didn't actually have to sacrifice him. He just showed forth that he was willing to do so. So the same thing. Now, the brothers was uh, talking about uh, the family. Right. And the lesson. So it could be the same thing with some of us all right, that may have families. 
may be brought to the brink of where hey they like all right well if you don't if you don't take this chip then we going to do this and that to your children and your whatever the case may be right and i don't want to go into a whole bunch of examples and and not to incite you know uh, uh some false fear you know into um anybody but just the the reality of the situation all right if that if that was to present itself will we not be faithful to you how about shimmy i was shy that's what we wish we should hope to be and that's the mentality that we should be in no matter what it is and then having faith all right because the lord can raise that seed back up all right so let's say that is a situation and uh, a loved one dies all right your seed may die okay the lord can raise that seed back up all right that's nothing as a matter of fact whatever you lose you're gonna get it back in one shape form or fashion whether it's on this side or in the world to come all right in the kingdom uh that is the book of so lucky. I know it's in the Gospels. I just can't quote it all the way. This world. All right, this is, um, let's see. All right, this is Luke chapter 18 and verse 29 or verse 28. It says, then Peter said, lo, we have left all and followed thee. Right. So they left everything, man. Uh, they had families that they had to leave. All right. Occupations that they were a part of that they left. Homes that they left. All right. They left a lot, man. So Peter's asking, said, lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, verily, I say unto you, truly, I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of the most high sake who shall not receive manifold. All right. A lot more, more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. So, all right, if you forsake certain things, all right, because of your faith towards you, how about Shemiah was shy for the kingdom's sake, right? You're going to receive great. All right. And it says manifold on this side and in the world to come. So you might go through that, that, uh, that trial process, man. All right. And then as soon as you overcome that, your, your children restored unto you, they're fine. They're cool. Or even in the kingdom, all right, you get them back in the kingdom. So, you know, these things have to uh, to be in our mind. You know, of course, it's easier, easy uh, said now when we're not in the face of certain of those things. But when that time's come, that time comes, all right, I, I pray and hope that the Holy Spirit continues to uh, provide us with precepts in our mind, all right, to comfort us, all right, when we're going through those times of uh, tribulation or the hour of temptation, huh? so that we can be comforted and, and, and not... Uh, uh, and not um rest rest in the flesh so to speak all right so it says uh that's pretty much it on that all right and that was in on genesis so i'm gonna just finish off with these last few precepts this is the book of uh luke chapter 9 and verse 23 it says um yep it says and he said to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me right meaning that you have to deny your own desires if we want to follow yah bashim yah washa you're going to have desires that are contrary man it says uh the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it so our mind fights to be <laughs> wicked all right while our spirit fights to be righteous that's just the nature of the battle all right it's talks uh paul I believe this Paul talks about it in Romans, uh, the seventh chapter. All right. The the war between the, the spirit and the flesh. OK, so we have to uh, we have to battle. All right. Those carnal desires. All right. You want to just rest and be comfortable here, not going through any tribulation, whatever the case may be. You have to battle all those. Uh, 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 we have to battle all those uh, desires. All right. And, and go through the fire, man. OK. And, and, and follow the Lord, all right, as we go through our trials and tribulations. It says, verse 24, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, right? So if you're trying to hold on to everything, okay, a lot of people are going to take the RFID chip, the mark of the beast, because they just want, they can't let go of uh, whether it's their family, all right? And they're going to sell themselves out because they don't want to see, they got their uh, wife in their ear, you know, bugging out. How are we going to eat? How are we going to do this? Just take the chip, damn it. They finna kill our daughter, all that, you know, all that madness, man. Well, there's going to be people that succumb to that. Now, watch the clip. 
Uh, it was some months back. It was a dude in, uh, I believe it was in Venezuela, might have been Venezuela or somewhere in South America, might have been Brazil. But anyways, the dude, he was talking about um, how they're going through a famine. And he had, he had said, he was like, yeah, it's one thing, you know, when you're hungry and this and that and the third, but it's another when your daughter and your, your, your wife, they can't, they can't handle that. They can't deal with that. So he's like, I got to go. Pretty much he was saying, like, I got to go do what I got to do. I can deal with it. But my family and stuff, they can't. All right. Which shows you that, you know, the, the, the woman is the weaker ves vessel, you know. But nevertheless, he was like, pretty much like, I'll do whatever I can for my family. All right. But us in this faith, our mentality is we'll do whatever we can for you. How about Shimei I was shot first and foremost. And the Lord will take care of the rest. That has to be our mentality. I show forth my faith until Yahweh by Shimei was shot and may the Lord reward me and my household if it be of his will, right? So it says Luke chapter 9 and verse uh, 24, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it, right? For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? So there it goes right there. Because what profit is it? All right, dude, he takes the chip. Fuck it, I'm going to take it. All right, now you, you finna be destroyed. All right, probably have your family take it. They're going to get destroyed even with a uh, worse destruction, man. Nothing's going to be worse than that. And this is just me speaking as a man. All right, but nothing, I can't imagine anything being worse than that nuclear fire. All right, that nuclear fire and them, uh, that heat from them lasers, <laughs> that's going to be no joke. So at the end of the day, nothing can... Nothing that Esau can do or threaten you with can surpass what the Lord can do, all right, until you, man. That's why it says, fear not him which can kill the body and do nothing after, but fear him which can kill the body and the soul in hell, meaning that he can, the Lord can really jack you up, man, all right? He can really destroy you beyond what Esau can do, okay? So this is, uh, I'm going to end it off with this, and let's see. Uh, actually, that's it. You know, that's it through the spirit. So I'll end it right there. Lord's will, that was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, the honors to the elders and apostles, a great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.